The holidays are rolling around and uh, gingerbread men will be dancing, at least if you go see the Nutcracker. Of course, you'll only be seeing it uh, on TV these days. Now, I don't have a gingerbread man, but I have a man made of ginger, the real ginger. And of course, it has a long and interesting history because not only does it afford flavor, but it can also act as a preservative in things like cookies and cakes. And you remember the story of Hansel and Gretel? They were walking through the forest and they come upon this gingerbread house. Well, bakers in Europe capitalized on that story. It was a famous Grimm Brothers story. And, and all of a sudden they started to make all kinds of things out of ginger cakes and houses, cookies, etc. And it was kind of a nice smell. But besides the nice smell, what else does ginger do? Well, it has a, a possible effect on nausea uh, associated with motion sickness. Some people say even chemotherapy, if you're nauseous, it uh, pays to try a little bit of, of ginger. But uh, those are kind of uh, iffy things. But there are some very interesting stories about ginger, though. If we go back to the 16th and 17th century, you know what they would do in those days? They would take a piece of ginger and they would take a horse and when they were trying to sell a horse, the uh, prospective buyer would look at the horse and want to see a tail that was nice and upright. So believe it or not, what they would do would be to take a piece of ginger and put it into the rectum of the horse. And that irritated the horse just enough so that it would lift the tail. And apparently this, this was a thing. And uh, today, uh, although it is illegal, this technique called figging supposedly still done by some uh, uh, show horses in order to make them dance more lively and to keep their tail up. But uh, people also do this, believe it or not. I don't know, somehow there, there are these stories and, and uh, I think they, they are documented where people have actually taken ginger and put it into their orifices because it, this little irritating feeling somehow becomes erotic. Never mind that. There are some other interesting stories about ginger, though, even in the legal variety. Ginger ale. Now, that brings up a fascinating account. As you can see, ginger ale, it says on it, made with real ginger. Well, believe it or not, that resulted in a number of class action lawsuits by people claiming that they had been seduced into buying ginger ale thinking that it had all kinds of health benefits because it is made with real ginger. And as they found out, the so-called natural flavor, which is listed on the label, only has a very, very small amount of real ginger extract in it, only a couple of parts per million, not even enough to, to give it a taste and certainly not enough to have any kind of a health benefit. And these class action suits actually have resulted in some settlements. Uh, recently in Canada, there was a $200,000 settlement for a gentleman who claimed that he had been misled by thinking that it contained real ginger. Well, uh, the label still says contains real ginger because it does, but it contains just a smidgen. Again, unlikely to have any kind of health benefit at all, but uh, ginger ale, may not have very much ginger, but it does have sugar in it. And like all soft drinks, of course, we have to be careful with the amount of sugar in there. Well, tell you the truth, I hardly ever drink ginger ale. I can't even remember the last time I, I've tried it. So here's a little experiment. It tastes kind of interesting. Does it taste like ginger? I don't know. I know that these taste like ginger, let me compare. Mm. That's a real ginger taste. Not the same. Not the same. Anyway, there you go. Stories about ginger, about history, about figging. Don't do it. Don't do it. But if you want to drink some ginger ale, Give that a shot, but remember, it is not made with any significant amount of real ginger.